if you're watching this, this is because you're trying to get the box and whisker plot portion of your project done. I hope you're having a great day. The year's almost over. So just listen to my voice, I think, for potentially the last video of the year. And I hope you find it helpful so that you can complete this project. So for the box and whisker, recall that we need these few things. We need the minimum, we need quartile one, quartile three, maximum, and median. You have a few ways you could go about this. I know that I have my data set here starting at 17, going all the way down. If you really want it to look clean and proper, one option you have is to just put it in that order, uh, least to greatest. If you're interested in this, highlight everything. You're then going to click data and then sort range by column A to Z. This will put everything in order. And so pretty clearly, we can see that the minimum 17, that's not tough. The maximum way down here is 31. That makes sense. Quartile one's a little tricky to get. So walk, uh, walk alongside me as I take a look at this. So this formula right here, what's this doing? This is looking for a quartile for all of this data. So everything in the column A, and this is looking for the first quartile. If I wanted to find quartile two, I could do that, but I just want quartile one. So you should have your data and this cell looks something like this. So feel free to take a moment, pause the video. I hit equals, I hit quartile, I hit A and then A and then one. So I know that I'm talking about quartile one and that should kick back your quartile one answer. For quartile three, we need that as well. Same song and dance, we're still equals. We're typing out quartile. You might see it come up in caps, which is fine. You're still focusing in on all of your data, which with whichever column it is that you're looking at. And this is the third column, or sorry, not the third column, the third quartile. So after you hit comma, you're hitting three, close it with parentheses, hit enter, boom. We see that our quartile three is 23. This takes us to the median, <clears throat> which you have two ways you could go about it. You could hit average for this, which is fine. Or sorry, median. Median has its own little function, but to build the idea that uh, quartile two is another way the median is, you can use equals quartile again. Highlight all of the data that's in column A or wherever your data is. Hit comma and then two parentheses, close it, hit enter, done. <clears throat> so far, so good. Okay. So this part gets a little tricky because although we have all of this data here, we're going to rewrite it again up here in this order that we see. So I'm starting with a few things. I'm starting with the minimum. So the minimum we here was seven, see here was 17. You're then writing in Q1, which is 22, Q3, which is 26. And the median, you actually don't even need to include this when you make the graph, so just disregard this. So don't worry about that. But you do need the max. So once you have these four numbers mapped out on the same row, not the column, you're hitting, uh, uh, yeah, you're highlighting everything, you're hitting insert, you're hitting chart, and you might come across this bar graph here, which is okay, but remember we want a candlestick. So we're hitting chart type. We're gonna find the candlestick. So again, not box and whisker, box and whisker isn't there. So if you're using Google Sheets, you're gonna have to do this. We're hitting candlestick. And lo and behold, we have our box and whisker. If you want to make it a little bit better to see, you can hit grid lines and ticks. You could talk about the major ticks. You could also have it go in increments of two. And so if we look closely at this, we see that our minimum was 17 between 16 and 18. Our Q1 was 22, which again was correct. We mapped that out there. Q3 was 26, maximum was 31. We're done our box and whisker plot, and there we go. 
So I hope that this helped you get the box and whisker part done. This is through Google Sheets again. In a moment, we'll talk about the questions you need to answer. All right, so we're now at the question stage. This is the final set of points that you need for the project. So what I did here was just copied, pasted the outline for those questions. You can submit this in a Word doc or through email when you uh, attach your charts, or your graphs. I'm open to that. Um, first question again, or part of the investigation was describing the goal. My goal was to see your top pro male skateboarders collectively older than top pro female skateboarders. Describe the result of your investigation. So you could say something to the effect of how most male skaters are between the ages of 24 and 25. As we see here for the men, for males, for females, you could say something along those lines. And I don't have the data for the female set up. So let's imagine that the ages are between Uh, 22 and 23, making male skaters older. Which set of data is more desirable? How do you know? I'm going to go ahead and say that the, I don't know, forever young, right? So female skaters data is more desirable. They're younger from most of it. IQR of each data set, okay? Remember that this is taking Q3 and deducting Q1. So over here, we said that Q3 was gonna be 26. And then if we deduct 22, it's four. Four for the males. What does this tell you about the data? This tells us that the uh, middle 50% of the data taken from males is within range of four years, specifically between the ages of 26 and 22. That's where the middle 50% seems to be of our data, which box plot is more concentrated, so more focused in a, an area of the middle, per se. Um, I'm just going to say the males are. Again, I'm not comparing here because I don't have the other one set up, but you'll have two. Uh, compare the meat medians. What conclusion can you reach based on this? Let's say that the female median is less than the male median. Collectively, we could say something to the effect of how males are older. And middle 50% of your data between which two values um, we kind of already did this. We said it's between the ages 26 and 22. Again, we gave a shout out to this with Q3 and Q1. Um, what does this tell you about the data? Well, top pro skateboarders in their 20s, that's one thing. There, what else? What else could we say? They're older than age 21, most of them, at least. Maybe that's something with uh, being 21. I guess they've uh, been more focused at that point, post 21 years old. Uh, those are the six questions you need to answer. I know that here it says it's all numbered, but uh, just disregard that hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Thank you for listening to my voice all year. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the future. Take care, be safe.